Today I'm going to show you how to easily create an epic Fortnite montage like this. In this video, you're going to learn how to edit to the beat, no matter what track you're using, where to find the best royalty free music, how to add slow motion and effects on your kill screens, and how to add cool seamless transitions between two clips. And do you know what the best part is? It's all 100% free and totally accessible even if you're a complete beginner. A video editing beginner, that is, not a Fortnite beginner, because you'll need some kills, you know? So if you're ready to learn how to edit your own epic Fortnite montage, then grab your snacks, get comfortable, and let's get cracking. What's up everyone, welcome back to another creative editing tutorial. My name is Francois and thanks for joining me on this beautiful day. So my girlfriend and I play Fortnite together a lot. The thing is though, she's a lot better at it than I am. But don't tell her I said that. So since I'm not a noob anymore, I wanted to put together a little compilation of my best dubs. You know, as you do. And if you want to create epic Fortnite montages, there are four things you're going to need, all of which are 100% free to use for my people out there. Number one is the editing software. Number two are the clips. Number three, the music. Number four, the editing process itself putting it all together to make one sick video. Let's get into it. So first of all, we're going to look at a free video editing software. I'm sure you can find many different ones out there, but to be honest, they all suck compared to the one I'm about to show you. If you go to Blackmagic Design's website, you'll see it's 100% legit that professional video editing software DaVinci Resolve is free. In DaVinci Resolve, you literally get everything you need. For Fortnite montages and any other types of edits you may create in the future, the main tools you're most likely going to use are a clear media browser to organize all of the clips you're going to work on, the edit tab which is where you'll likely spend most of your time editing your videos the fusion tab which is where we can add some cool effects to our clips and then the delivery tab which is where you're going to export your work sure you can upgrade for 300 pounds if you really wanted some extra features like more transitions more effects but as you'll see you definitely won't need to so go ahead and install it is very straightforward then the second thing you'll need is to record clips of your actual kills Whatever platform you're on, just make sure that your frame rate is at least 50 frames per second. You'll see why this is crucial in the fourth step. Luckily for you, and for me actually, in this tutorial I'll be using some clips from a streamer called Perendor, who has made them available for us to use for free. Big shout out to Perendor. The good thing with these are, number one, is free for us to use and practice with. Number two, the frame rate is at 60 frames per second, which will allow us to make some nice slow motion shots. And number three, I always say this, the best way to learn faster from any tutorial out there is to use the same asset as the instructor. This way you don't run into issues that aren't already covered in the tutorial. At least that's how we roll on this channel. The third thing you'll need to create those sick dubs compilation is some royalty free music so that YouTube doesn't flag up your content or even worse, delete it. Trust me, I've had that happen to me and it's very annoying. For this, I'm going to use the best platform for royalty free music, which is Epidemic Sound. Now I know I promised you a 100% free way to edit videos, which is why if you click on my affiliate link listed below, you'll be able to get a whole month of unlimited music for free. You'll literally be able to download as many tracks as you wish and nobody will care. Yep, nobody. Whether you choose to stay with them after your free trial or not is up to you, but if you post your videos within that first month, they will be completely clear and not even YouTube could flag up your content. This is not a sponsored video at all, but to be honest, their choice of music is by far the best and the most varied. They even have playlists already made for epic montages, gaming and all that, so it'd be rude not to use them. And finally, the last thing we need is to put all of these ingredients together. I've got five clips and one song here, which I'm going to drag and drop into the media browser here. If you right click anywhere here, you'll see that we can create a new bin to host all of our footage and create a new timeline. For this one, untick the use project settings box, go to the format tab and make sure that the new sequence will be 1920 by 1080 resolution and very important, 25 or 30 frames per second. Now move on to the edit tab by clicking here at the bottom. This is the part that will allow us to align all our clips with the music. First of all, let's select everything and delete it. Then open the media browser by clicking here and find the songs you've chosen. Obviously, I don't need the whole song, so in order to just choose a portion of it, I'm going to double click on it. That will open it in the preview panel here. Let's scrub until I find the parts that I want to use, which is roughly here. Now let's add in and out points, so the beginning and end of the portions that we want to keep. I want the beginning to be here, so I'll press I on my keyboard, press play with the space bar, let it play until where I want the portion to end, somewhere around here seems good, and then I'm going to press O on my keyboard. Now you'll see this new portion of the song has been highlighted here on the timeline, so let's just click on the waveform here and drag it onto the main sequence here. As you can see, this song has some high points where the white line goes up. We call them accents or simply beats. And 
this is where I want all the kills to happen. What I'm going to do is put markers on each one of these beats so that we can easily line them up with the kills. Simply scrub through the sequence with the left and right arrows until the player head is lined up with the beats and press M on your keyboard. Make sure that the audio clip is selected, otherwise you'll be adding markers to the sequence, which is not what we want. Now let's add some clips. For that, let's repeat what we've done with the song. I'm going to go to the media browser again, open it here if it's not already. Double click on the first clip you want to add to the sequence, then we'll open it in the preview panel. Now, just like with the song, I'm going to play the clip until I see the kill that I want. There it is. So to rewind, just move this bar to the left, which is our preview playhead. Here it should do for now. Let's press I on the keyboard to mark the beginning of this portion, play it through and press O to mark the end. Now I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and use the left and right arrows to scrub through the portion again and find exactly where the kill happens. Once I've found roughly where it is, I'm going to let go of the shift key and only use the left and right arrows to fine tune the scrubbing. There's the kill. I'm now going to press M on my keyboard to add a marker. Now if I click it and drag it onto the timeline, you'll see that it comes with the original audio. If that's something you want, that's cool, leave it there. However, I don't want to hear the audio from that clip. So if I hover my mouse over the bottom of the preview here, we get two icons that appear. That means that if I drag this icon over here, I'll only get the video. And if I drag this icon here, I'll only get the audio. So with that said, let's add just the video clip and line up the two markers together, just like that. I'm going to repeat this process for the next four clips. So go to the media browser, double click the clip to open it in our preview panel, mark the in and out points and add a marker on the first frame of the kill. Add the marker by pressing M and import only the video by dragging this icon to our timeline. Line up the video marker with the second marker on the song and we're done. I'm now going to fast forward through the next three clips as it's exactly the same process. Now let's adjust the duration of each individual clip by dragging the corners to the left. But I'm going to leave some room here right after each kill. You'll see why in just a second. Okay, so now it's time for us to add some cool effects to the kill screen. First of all, let's add the slow motion because that's the most important one. With the first clip selected, press Ctrl or Command R on the keyboard to bring up the time and speed controls. Place your playhead on the marker, click on this arrow to open up the options and choose add speed points. You'll now see that the speed controls have been split and this option controls the speed of the portion before the speed point and this option controls the speed of the portion after the speed point. So I want the clip to play normal speed and just as the kill happens, I want it to go slow motion. So I'm not going to touch this control, but on the second one, let's click on the arrow, choose change speed and choose 50%. This will elongate that portion of the clip, which is why I initially left a gap here. Let's adjust the length of that clip to fill up the timeline and play this back. So now it's normal speed. Now it's slow motion. Let's repeat this process onto the next clip. Place your playhead on the marker. Press Ctrl or Command R on your keyboard to bring up the speed controls, then click on this arrow and add a speed point. On the right side of the clip, click on this arrow, change the speed to 50% and adjust the length of the clip. Repeat that process for the other three clips. Now when you play this back, it's very cool, but it could be a lot better. As the kills happen, I want the camera to zoom in very fast and then slowly pull back to normal. So for that, let's add an adjustment layer on that portion of each clip where we want the effects to take place. Open up the effects tab by clicking here. Let's close the media library as well. Go over to the effects tab and drag this adjustment layer on top of our clip. Let's adjust the length to start on the kill and finish at the end of the clip. Now with the adjustment clip selected and the playhead anywhere over it, let's go over to the fusion tab by clicking here. Now this might be a little confusing if you've never used a software like that before, but if you do exactly as I say, you'll be just fine. First of all, if it's not already showing up, make sure your nodes are showing by clicking here. With the media in node selected, press Ctrl Command Spacebar to bring up your effects and type in camera shake. Let's select this one and make sure that the link does go from media in to camera shake and from camera shake to media out. Now let's bring up the inspector panel by clicking this button here. Whether you're in the fusion tab or the edit tab, the inspector panel is where your settings will always be. Now I want the camera shake to start straight on the kill quite strongly, but then decrease over time. Make sure you're at the beginning of the clip, then in the inspector tab under the camera shake settings, you're going to type in these values and click on this diamond icon here, which will add a keyframe. Now go to the end of the clip by clicking here and on this setting, I'm going to add a new keyframe and type in this value here. Now, if you don't know what a keyframe is, it's basically like a save point that remembers certain settings at certain time. So right now, as things are, all these settings will remain the same when I play the clip back, but this setting will go down from this value down to this value as time goes on. So now if you play this back, you'll see that the camera shakes a lot at the beginning, but by the end, the shake decreases to zero. Now this camera shake makes the footage move so much that it goes out of frame here. So bring up the effects again by pressing Ctrl Command Spacebar and type in Transform. Once again, let's make sure that the transform effect is within that chain of effects, 
but also make sure that it's after the camera shake. If it's not, hold down shift on your keyboard and drag it over this line. Once it turns blue, it means it's ready to be linked. Now go back to the beginning of the clip by clicking here, select the transform node, increase the size of the clip until the whole frame is filled up, and click on the diamond here next to size to add a keyframe. Go to the end of the clip by clicking here, add a new keyframe to the size setting and bring it back to one. So what this does is at the start of the clip, the video will be zoomed in and as it plays on, it slowly zooms out to normal. Okay, so now the final effect to add is the glow effect. Back in the notes section, press Ctrl, Command and Spacebar to bring up the effects, type in glow, select this one and make sure it's linked after the transform node. Go to the beginning of the clip and type in these values. Add a keyframe to the blend setting. Go forward 10 frames by pressing the right arrow 10 times on the keyboard. So we're not going all the way to the end of the clip. Then add a new keyframe and set the blend to zero. We don't want the glow to last too long, so that's why we aren't going until the end of the clip. Now let's go back to the edit tab and play this whole action back. Amazing! So as you can see, once the kill happens, not only does the clip go into slow motion, but we also get a nice impact thanks to the zoom in and the camera shake, and the glow just helps to add a sense of explosion. And the best thing about putting all these effects into an adjustment layer is that now I don't have to repeat any of these actions for the other clips here. I can just duplicate the layer onto them. Simply click on the layer, hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard, and drag it to its side. That made a copy. Let's do it again for the other clips. Now if you play the whole thing back, you'll see we're getting somewhere really nice. Now let's add some transition, shall we? Still in the Edit tab, go back to the Effects Library and click on the Video Transitions panel. Now you could add in whichever transition you want, but the ones that you really want are the Glitch Transition and either the Pan Left or Pan Right Transition. To add them, simply click and drag the transition between two clips. Now you can change the length of that transition to be about this long. And to change the settings on that transition, where should I go? You guessed it, to the Inspect tab, well done. Make sure your transition is selected and play around with the settings. I'll leave mine around these values. You can duplicate transition the same way that we duplicated the adjustment layers by clicking on it, holding down Alt or Option on your keyboard and dragging it onto the next one. Let's add transitions on all the clips and once that's done, all I have left to do is add a simple title at the intro. Once again, let's go over to the FX library and go to the title section. Let's select this one, drag it onto the timeline on top of the first clip. So now if I wanted to change the position, the font and potentially the color of that text, where would I go? That's right, to the Inspector tab, you're on fire! I've got this really cool font that I want to use. If you want it too, I'll leave a link to it in the description below for you guys to try out. Let's type in some core cool title here, select that font, change the size, position and length if you want to, and uh, that's you pretty much done. Now in order to export your video, head on over to the delivery tab by clicking here. Don't worry about the actual settings here, since you're very likely to upload your videos to YouTube, then click on the YouTube logo at the top. This will optimize your export for YouTube specifications and you'll be able to upload your videos directly to YouTube without having to leave DaVinci Resolve. Check this out. Click on the arrow next to the YouTube logo. Make sure that it's set to at least 1080p. Choose a name and destination for your file to be exported in. Change the format to MP4 and make sure you tick the box that says Upload Directly to YouTube. If this is the first time you do it, it will ask you to log in and give permission to DaVinci Resolve to post on your behalf. Agree to everything. Change the title, description, visibility and category. And when you're ready to export and upload, click on Add to Render Queue. And now in the Render Queue over here, click on Render All. The export is now done, so let's see what we got. As you can see, we've got our nice kill screen with a slight glow on it, a cool slow motion, a camera shake, a punch in and a zoom out, and some cool transition. And it's also uploading to my channel in private right now. So there you have it guys, this is how you can edit your epic Fortnite montage for 100% free using DaVinci Resolve, even if you're a complete beginner. Don't forget to get your one month free trial with Epidemic Sound to get some sick music. I'll have a link to that in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did and you didn't mind my accent, you can like this video as it really helps with the algorithm. Also, whilst you're here, feel free to get subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future creative editing tutorial every single week on this channel. Finally, if you're wondering how you can edit your videos just like Dude Perfect, you should watch my tutorial right here. I think you'll really like it. As always, thanks so much for watching. My name is Francois, see you next week for another video.